this week in Fulton. After an historic general election in Fulton, county officials planning a runoff election that the entire country is watching. We'll explain. Early voting is already underway in another runoff election. I'm Douglas Bell, and I'll have details on which one and the early voting locations. Fulton's chairman gives his assessment of the 2020 election cycle. Also, the doctor's in the house with a pandemic warning about Thanksgiving gatherings. And there is a new police chief in the county. Those stories and more in this edition of Fulton Today that starts right now. Welcome everyone. The country is watching as Fulton County voters decide the fate of the U.S. Senate. That election day is January 5th. However, there is another runoff election underway right now in the 5th Congressional District, the district long served by the late Congressman John Lewis. FGTV's Douglas Bell joins us now with the very latest. Douglas. Shawnya, while voters settled the winner of the new 5th Congressional District representative in the November general election, this runoff election is to fill the unexpired term of this same seat. Here's what voters need to know. Early voting will take place weekdays from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. now through November 25th of 2020, as well as on Saturday, November 21st of 2020, during the same hours. Here are the locations. The Buckhead Library, the C.T. Martin Natatorium and Rec Center, College Park Library, the Evelyn G. Lowry at Cascade Library, and the Metropolitan, Northwest Branch at Scotts Crossing, and Ponce de Leon Library branches. Out of consideration for fellow voters and poll workers, voters are being asked to wear a face covering when voting in person. Those in line will also be asked to stand at least six feet apart from one another in accordance with social distancing recommendations. Please visit the Georgia Secretary of State's My Voter page or Fulton County Registration and Elections page. And as you mentioned, the country will be watching the runoff election for the two Georgia Senate seats up for grabs. That election will be on January 5th of 2021. Again, check the county's website for all of the deadlines for that race as the information is updated. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Douglas Bell. All right, thank you very much, Douglas. Please keep us updated. Meanwhile, as Fulton's election officials continue to address all of the requirements and requests related to the November general election, county leadership is assessing the successes and opportunities of the entire election cycle. Rob Pitts is the chairman of the Fulton County Board of Commissioners. Chairman, thanks for being here again. Thank you. So we are still in the midst of the election runoffs. However, overall, how are you feeling about the major general election cycle? I couldn't be happier, could not be more pleased. You know, going back to June, the challenges that we face in, we saw those challenges and took those challenges as an opportunity uh, to make changes, which we did. And so we were prepared for what I refer to as the big dance on November 3rd recognizing that it was going to be a, a historic election and unprecedented turnout, which it actually was. But because of the preparation, uh, because of the financial resources that we, have, we put in place to help the process, we were able to have, in my judgment, a very, very hugely successful uh, November 3rd election. And sir, what about those lessons learned? Well, I think that going forward, based upon the, the going back to, uh, to June, once again, the challenges that we faced then, we saw those as opportunities. And what we are going to do is put together a blueprint for, because we got more elections coming, there will be others. I think that this blueprint, once we are done with it, uh, it will be a blueprint not only for us, but that other jurisdictions can follow if they want to have as successful uh, an, an election as we've had here. So there were lessons learned, but lessons learned really well. We put a lot of financial uh, resources uh, behind this effort. There were a lot of uh, employees who worked directly for the county who stepped up to help us. And our private sector, nonprofit, uh, also joined in providing employees. This particular facility, and I can't say enough about the Atlanta Hawks, that organization, 
CEO, uh, President Steve Coonan, the ownership, and Coach Pierce, uh, players, Trey Pierce, and others. Uh, I can't, I mean, I am so thrilled about the, the role that Fulton County government has played in this. I mean, it's almost like it's a movement, to be honest with you. Um, other uh, sports teams, uh, different leagues and other cities saw what we were doing here, here in Fulton County, Georgia. So, well, if the Atlanta Hawks and Fulton County government can do this, why can't we? But in addition to that, the players, based upon uh, what happened here, the players on other teams, uh, they got involved. And I say this, and no disrespect meant to any of the professional athletes, but it's probably true. Many of them probably had never registered to vote. Very few probably ever voted in their lives. But because of this movement, to I would say 95% are now registered and in fact voted on November 3rd. And in addition to that, they became involved in their communities, going out, working with young people in particular, talking about the importance of voting. There's something more important, or as important, I'd say really more important, than listening to, to rap music and all that. So now they understand the significance of voting. And finally, massive undertaking by the county staff. Your comments to them? Oh God, I could not be more proud of our employees. When we, the call went out saying that we needed assistance, we need volunteers, hands went up. So, I mean, I, I really owe a debt of gratitude to the, the great, great, great employees of Fulton County government. Thank you. Fulton Chairman, again, I know you are not done with the runoffs, but I appreciate you giving us your time. Thanks for being here. Now, to see all of the final results and other county election updates, again, please visit the county's website. And still to come, the plea from the county's top doc to residents to not become pandemic fatigued as Thanksgiving draws near. Stay with us. Fulton County found itself on the national stage during the election 2020 season and with additional runoff spending in national races, that spotlight may continue for some time. However, the election is not the only major issue Fulton has been dealing with and continues to deal with this year. Dick Anderson is the Fulton County manager. Sir, thanks again for coming back. Thank you, Shania, for having me back. I really enjoy uh, being able to speak with you. Well, Mr. Manager, we just heard from the chairman about his thoughts on the election cycle, and he thanked many county employees. You were leading the team in this effort. Who all collaborated for this, and what did you learn? Well, elections was an all-consuming effort, and I think as it came together uh, and we saw the media from all over the world and the United States, obviously, uh, here in Fulton County waiting with bated breath to uh, see the results, kind of underscored why it was all consuming. And I would just say, first and foremost, I've never been involved in anything that represented more of a turnaround from where we were in June to where we were in November. And perhaps the, the best indicator of that was as we surveyed voters leaving our sites uh, on the, on, in November, what we saw was over 95% of them rated the experience as very satisfied, and 5% rated it as satisfied. That's a phenomenal rating in any dimension, but certainly in uh, voting. And I think as I think about all of the innovations that occurred, whether it was mobile voting sites, the Fulton County Votes app, the drop boxes, an absentee process that really worked this time and was able to handle multiples of what the absentee volumes had ever been before. I start with the dedication of Rick Barron and his entire team. I mean, truly, that team worked night and day and never gave up, never gave in, despite many obstacles. When I think of the COVID-19 outbreak in the warehouse that actually impacted 25 of our 60 employees, the pipe break uh, at the uh, State Farm Arena that impacted absentee uh, voting. Those sorts of things could not be anticipated, obviously, but they were overcome, and they were overcome by a set of employees that are completely dedicated to this task. In addition to that, as I mentioned to the Board of Commissioners, there was a gang of three, and the gang of three was Bridget Bailey, Mike Rowicki, and April Pye, and they really stepped in from their normal jobs and assisted with a global planning effort coming out of June 
that looked at every detail involved in our election operations, from staffing to how the equipment was distributed to anything that we could do to make the voter experience uh, uh, more uh, satisfying. And as you can see, it fundamentally worked. But those three folks called on virtually every department in Fulton County. I'll name just a few. Dream, as an example, I called it the, ride, the midnight ride of Paul Revere when a moving company failed to deliver on the day before voting. Literally, Dream stepped in and staffed and operationalized a program that moved all of that equipment to where it needed to be and did it by midnight that night, the day prior to election. That truly could have been a disaster without the help of Ellis Kirby, Joe Davis, and their entire teams. Likewise, technology was a huge, huge complicating factor. This configuration that we have is more complicated, and our IT department under Glenn Melendez and all of their staff, along with contractors that we brought in where we put a technician on every site, really made this work smoothly. And the technical problems simply were not there. Likewise, we looked at security of our sites. So both Chief Yates as well as Matt Kalmeyer and their staff in emergency management did yeoman's work to ensure that the sites were being monitored, that police officers were actually available for each site, and that no significant events occurred, which was, again, a, a, just a phenomenal effort. Speaking of sites, many of our sites were libraries. So not only did Gail Holloman and their staff do great work staffing elections, but their libraries themselves were voting sites. And I think those sites worked, uh, worked flawlessly. Again, as I continue to just think down the, the number of folks that were involved in this effort, it's, it's phenomenal. One I would also take note of that you wouldn't necessarily expect, but the Board of Health stepped in. Both Dr. Paxton and Dr. Holland got personally involved as this COVID-19 outbreak raged and set up quickly a strike team that went to our warehouse, worked with them, again, to institute rapid testing ensured that we had proper procedures in place for social distancing. In fact, we moved the entire operation to the Georgia World Congress Center literally overnight to accomplish that. But the Board of Health being with their leadership personally involved in this made all the difference in the world. Lastly, I'd make note of two or three other things. As I said, there was worldwide public relations interest and we have a master in Jessica Corbett at public relations. And I think even this tested every skill that uh, she's ever had, and she handled it uh, wonderfully. And I realize there is still more work to do with the election runoffs and the closeout, but there's also another important story that is ongoing, this pandemic. Uh, the county had made some strides in our testing and trends. However, now it appears that nationwide there is a new wave of cases and even deaths. How will that impact the county's planning and ability to continue with its phased in opening approach? Yes, well, the, the COVID trends are still uh, challenging. We've moved from a low of 64 cases a day now to over 130 a day. We also have seen the test positive rate when someone tests uh, in one of our facilities or in the hospitals go from a low of three and a half percent to just above five percent. So both of those trends are challenging, as we've said before. The good news is we have not seen a huge spike in hospitalization. So we still have over 700 beds vacant uh, in our hospitals, and about 200 or so they're occupied by patients who have COVID-19. However, when we look forward, we do have projections that, so, that show those cases worsening and the number of hospitalizations worsening through these winter months. We just did a public service announcement uh, with Dr. Paxson that really emphasized that winter is coming. And I thought that was a very apt uh, message for all of our citizens to continue to do all of the things that they know to do to inhibit the spread of the virus while we continue to test and test by the way at a level that by the end of the year we will have administered over a million tests. And again, I wanna emphasize how important that has been to delivering an outcome for Fulton County that is much better than where we started in March or April when we occupied almost 20% of the total cases in Georgia. We're now below 8% of the total cases in Georgia. And most importantly, the death projections emanating from that are one half of what they would have been otherwise. So all of our efforts have accrued to that benefit. 
The other thing that we're hopeful about as it relates to this, of course, is uh, an overall vaccine. And there's positive reports that are coming out about that daily. Uh, the plans are not clear yet since the vaccine has not been approved by the FDA. But I think many of our efforts and our capabilities through our fixed sites as well as mobile sites, our unique partnership with CORE to deliver some of those services can all come into play as we continue to do what we know to do now, but also prepare for a future where the vaccine is available. And while I got you here, sir, any additional updates that you care to share? Well, the other update is we are beginning to think about 2021. Is It is upon us. We still have an election to execute in 2021, which will be for the runoff of two Senate races in Georgia. And if you think about the attention that we got in November, you could probably say it's going to be equal in January. So we still have work to do in that area in support of Rick Barron and his team. Dick Anderson, always a pleasure, sir. Thanks again for your time. Shania, again, thank you. And, and again, I, I breathe a huge sigh of relief that the elections are behind us and we had such a good result. But I also know that we've got plenty of challenges going forward. And I, again, thank you for this opportunity to be able to describe some of those for 2021 and beyond. Thanks again. Now, the numbers of COVID-19 cases, as you heard, are not trending in the right direction nationally, and health officials continue to sound the alarm as the holidays are fast approaching. When we recently spoke to the Fulton County Board of Health Director, she too expressed concern about families gathering this Thanksgiving. I just want to remind people to remember that, you know, Thanksgiving, a holiday where family and friends traditionally gather, is also coming soon. And that represents a time when we are at real risk of seeing a big increase in cases. So please, please, please start making a plan for how you're going to avoid this in your own life. You know, it might involve making alternate arrangements such as reducing or foregoing travel, limiting the size of your gathering, or even celebrating together virtually. But no matter what you do, always follow those prevention priorities of wearing a mask, social distance, and wash your hands. And if we all do that together, we can do a lot to stop this epidemic. Now the Board of Health has launched its Winter Is Coming campaign to encourage people to be careful. Take a look. We are in the midst of a one in a hundred years pandemic, and we're clearly experiencing a surge in infections in Georgia and across the United States. The winter is coming reference is appropriate because winter literally is coming. And with the cold weather, people spend more time indoors and in close contact with others, thereby increasing the chances of transmitting infection. And it's also the start of traditional cold and flu season. Practice social distancing and wear a mask whenever you're out in public. Wash your hands and try not to touch your face. Take advantage of the free COVID-19 testing that's available at the numerous testing sites that we've been set up throughout Fulton County. You should also take advantage of the free seasonal flu vaccinations that we're now offering at the Fulton County COVID testing sites. Fulton County, winter is coming. As a reminder, Fulton County still has weekly testing sites available and flu vaccinations. Check out the Board of Health's website for daily locations and times. When we come back, meet Fulton's new top lawman, Chief Wade Yates, joins us next. Well, Fulton County looks within to find the new chief for its police department. W. Wade Yates is no stranger to the department after serving for decades. Chief Yates, congratulations and welcome to Fulton today. Hi, Shania. Thanks for having me. So this does, in fact, culminate a long career with Fulton. Share with everyone a little about your journey with the Fulton County Police Department. 
It has been long, Sean. Yeah, I've been here 27 years. I started in 1993 on patrol. After six years, I became a detective, uh, graduated to working homicide cases. I worked on a federal task force. Um, I've also worked on the SWAT team in special operations, narcotics, um, just about every area of the police department for the last several years as the administration commander working internal affairs and helping manage uh, countywide security for all of the buildings in Fulton County. And Chief, a lot is happening in our world uh, as you assume this role. What are some of your initial priorities as Chief? That's an interesting question, and if I had taken over for a broken police department, I would need a lot of priorities to make some, some immediate changes. Um, but I took over a long series of very phenomenal chiefs that have changed with the times and with community needs, and I believe that Fulton County Police Department is going in the right direction currently. Um, we are assisting our, our citizens with their needs. Primarily our citizens are businesses and the employees, um, but we're very involved in that. We're going in the right direction with body cameras. We're, we're requiring that usage on all officers. Um, so I really can't think of something that immediately has to change. Uh, I, it would be my goal to, to continue the path that we're on. And Sir Fulton has had a long, great relationship with the community. How do you intend on continuing to build on that? Well, as you know, this year we had the COVID-19 issues, and so as much community interaction as possible has stopped with social distancing. Obviously, we're still interacting with the community when they call for service, but outreach has not been as much, uh, again, because of COVID. So we did not get to do National Night Out this year. Uh, I hope to re-engage with that next year. We used to do a Citizens Academy, and it's been several years since we have done that, where we invite the community into a program where they get to see what a police officer does, what kind of training they receive, um, ride with an officer, and see what it's like day to day uh, so that they have a better understanding of why sometimes officers do what they do or behave the way they do. Um, in certain situations where they're concerned for their safety. So I think that's very important to restart. And my big push uh, for the coming year is going to be pedestrian safety on Fulton Industrial. Uh, for years, we have had pedestrians getting struck by motor vehicles. There's a lot of traffic out here. There's a lot of employees out here and a lot of foot traffic. And I think we need to add some street lights. Um, there's some, some physical things we can do to make it safer for them, but more importantly, I think we can engage with these large companies to present a, a short safety presentation to their employees on how they can navigate to and from their transportation uh, in a safe manner. And Chief, let me get your final thoughts. Sean, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the challenges that this job is going to present to me uh, personally and professionally. I also look forward to reaching out to all of the police departments that are within Fulton County and working with them in a supporting role as we have done in the past. Uh, but I look forward to working with those agencies and those police chiefs. Chief W. Wade Yates, I like the sound of that. <laughs> Thanks again, sir, and we appreciate your time. Thanks again for having me, Shania. Well, the Fulton County DA's office is awarded $2.5 million in grant funding to continue the Conviction Integrity Unit and the Sexual Assault Kit Initiative. Now, the grants were issued by the United States Department of Justice's Bureau of Justice Assistance in the amount of $2.5 million for the continuation of the DA Conviction Integrity Unit and the Sexual Assault Kit Initiative Task Force. Now, the $2 million grant awarded to the Sexual Assault Kit Initiative Task Force will be for it to continue its work, and the Conviction Integrity Unit's grant is 500000 Now, the Sexual Assault Kit Initiative Task Force was formed in response to the 1,500 backlogged sexual assault kits that were identified at Grady Hospital in 2015. And the Conviction Integrity Unit reviews past convictions for credible claims of actual innocence, wrongful conviction, and where feasible sentencing inequities. Now, as you may recall, last year, a Fulton County man's case involving a sentencing inequity was given a second look, and he was given a second chance and a job by movie mogul Tyler Perry. And still to come, looking for books for the kids to read during this pandemic? Your local library is offering a safe and free option to get them reading. Stay with us, everybody.
A federally funded program that helps low income households with their home energy bills is now available. Senior Services Director Ladisa Onilago is here to tell us exactly how it works. Good to see you again. It's great to be back. Thanks so much. So I understand there's an acronym that goes with this program. What exactly is L-I-H-E-A-P? LIHEAP is an acronym for Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program that helps to keep families safe and healthy through initiatives that assist with energy costs. LIHEAP is a seasonal program that supports seniors in need of aid regarding their heating or their cooling energy bills. And how has COVID changed the process this year? Quite a bit. Um, keeping the seniors safety in mind, uh, all applications will be processed this year over the phone. And Ladisa, are there any program restrictions for folks to participate? Yes, the applicant needs to be a U.S. citizen or a legally admitted immigrant. Their total gross annual income uh, needs to be about uh, below the 60% of the state's medium income. The applicant should also um, have full responsibility for paying the cost of an energy bill for the primary heating source for their home. And of course, you know, seniors want to know how they can get uh, information. How can they learn more about this program? Beginning November 17th, seniors who are 65 years or older can call the Department of Senior Services Starline number at 404-613-6000 for more information. And wrap it all up for me, Ladisa. Any closing thoughts? I do. The Senior Services Department also has an email address, Senior Services at FultonCountyEmail.gov, where seniors can contact us for more information. And we'll be processing applications between 9 a.m. through 4 p.m., again, starting November 17th through December 9th. Outstanding. Ladisa Onilago, Senior Services Director, great to see you again. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Thanks so much. Again, folks, if you want any information about this program, just check out the county's star line. And finally, as all Fulton County libraries remain closed for typical in-branch library services, there is a way for you to get some of those same services for pickup. Items placed on hold by library patrons will be available for pickup at a number of branches. In addition to curbside services, the library system's Ask a Librarian live assistance site will be available during the same hours as curbside services. It's really, really simple. We have folks pull up um, to an assigned parking spot. We have them all labeled in the parking lot. You call a phone number, which is right there at the spot. Um, somebody from the library takes your name, comes out to your car and delivers your books to you. Now, virtual programming will continue on the library social media channels by following at Fulco Library. For updates on curbside services, including the days and hours, just check out fullcolibrary.org. And before we go, our reminder that FGTV wants to connect with you online. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And of course, you can check up any of our programming anytime on our YouTube channel. So do us a favor and subscribe. Well, that does it for this edition of Fulton Today. Thank you so much for watching. Join us each week for news around and about Fulton County.